Okay. Which raises a question. So which I did this uh, scenario. It's, it's just a scenario. What this chart shows is that how much do the U.S. bill each year on average? It's the middle column, 1.6 million new home construction each year. <coughs> this is to, account, uh, to take into account some of the old demolished units. So there are old homes you demolish, so you need to replace some of those old demolished homes. And also to account for population increases. Every year, America is adding three million more people. Three million people every year, so you need to have more homes to house uh, this, the additional people living in the country. So the historical average is 1.6. 2002, the data is not shown, 2002 would be the year where media would not have mentioned anything about a housing market bubble. <clears throat> housing market was, in a sense, boring because it was so stable. There's no news information on housing in 2002 because things were just so stable. It was not moving up and down. 2003, there was some mention of, well, there's little heating activity in the housing. 2004, the uh, market is really picking up. 2005, the peak of the bubble. So if one sees the actual housing start in relation to the historical norm, one can say America was overbuilding. And perhaps some of the investors were buying two or three properties uh, and saying hope oh, to flip uh, within a short time span. So they were overbuilding. So the last column is just cumulatively adding up those situations. And so by 2006, one can say that America had more than one million excessive home production, too much building activity. Subsequently, during the crash, builders built less and less and less. And based on 2011 projections, builders will still be shut out of the market. Very little construction. And what is looking at possibly a 2.6 million housing shortage in relation to historical average. So this is implying a great shortage conditions. So the title, Future U.S. Housing Shortage? Question mark. And answer is, today, no. Next year, two years from now, hmm, interesting. Uh, because the data scenario is implying housing shortage. Data scenario is implying housing shortage today, but it's not a housing shortage today. And this is just a scenario. And the scenario implies normal situation, but the, we're not in a normal situation. We have a situation where young adults are living with their parents. <coughs> young adults. <laughs> who are living, uh, normally would have one additional roommate, now has three or four additional roommates. So even though you have a population increase, you are not seeking housing demand because we went through this harsh recession. Uh, but we are now coming out of the recession, so as people are seeking their own units, and the parents begin to say, son, I think it's time for you to grow up. <laughs> uh, I think as uh, people begin to, uh, that it could be a return of household formation, and once that happens, are we going to see a housing shortage? Now this covers both ownership, occupied housing, as well as rentals. So naturally, first area will be rental housing, but as more people seek out rental housing, vacancy rate falls, rents begin to climb. As rents begin to climb, some of the homeowners do the calculate, some of the renters do the calculation and say, why am I renting? Buying a home is cheaper. Uh, so that, that will be a uh, natural uh, demand cycle reappearing uh, once the slowdown in household formation ends and we have normal household formation from population growth. So housing shortage, the data suggests there is housing shortage. Reality say, no, there is no housing shortage. But once the economy improves and young adults begin to leave on their own, uh, then I think we could quickly begin to see some housing shortage condition developing in some markets.